Not all cons are created equal. Which one was made for you? Hey there, comic fam. Welcome back to Climbing Comics. I'm Alan, and in this episode, we'll be doing some planning for possible future comic convention shows. I have a ton of questions as to what type of show I want to go to, whether it be a small intimate show versus a kind of a bigger show. And just planning this out, I know that I wouldn't necessarily go there by myself. I'd obviously meet some of my comic book friends that I've met online, but one person I definitely want to go with is one person that I actually went to one of my first comic book conventions with, but I'll bring him on and we could talk about that experience together. So just like last time, I'll bring my friend Johnny onto the stream. Hey, Alan. Hey there, Johnny. How's it going? Good, good. Excited to talk about comic book conventions with you, man. It's been a long time. So <laughs> this past year, 2020, obviously nothing. 2021, yeah. first of the year, obviously nothing. And of course, if, if anything does open up, it, it would have to be safe. But let's let's start off with where we were and then we could talk about where we're going to go, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think our first comic convention, was it a comic convention or was it like a comic show? It was a convention, I think. This was back when WonderCon was still in San Francisco and, you know, we're in the Bay. So that was really convenient to go to because it was in a, it was in the Moscone Center, which is pretty big. And yeah. Um, yeah, there was cosplay, there was the artist Sally, there was vendors there. It was great. I really loved it. Yeah, I totally remember going to that comic convention. I at that time, this was pre me getting back into comics. So I felt like you dragged me to this because I might have <laughs> yeah. not wanted to go. I I have to admit I wasn't always a hundred percent into comics between, you know, nineteen ninety-three to 2018 i will say that during that time span i like liking of comic books and comic book characters was waning but yeah i'm glad you brought me there i remember the cosplaying i i don't i didn't pick up any books i don't think i did no yeah and at that time um it was a different stage in our lives you know because i went to my first con i think when it was a wonder con one and this was back when it was held in oakland like the marriott in oakland and oh wow it was, yeah it was fun you know like i got to dig through dollar bins but then as far as the big ticket items go i mean like back then what was what was considered big ticket was probably really cheap compared to what it is now yeah but yeah. yeah back then you know i remember thinking oh hey so do i get this book or do i spend money toward a ps2 or ps3 you know? Oh God! Now you're aging us. <laughs> I know, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Because oh, you know, man. I get more enjoyment out of a PS3. All right, not PS2. We weren't that. Uh, we're not that old, but PS3 <laughs> we, definitely. Okay. Yeah. okay. And thinking, man, like you know, I get so much enjoyment out of this video game versus the enjoyment out of this comic book. But now, of course, tables are turned. Um, I probably like comic books more than video games now because you know, for various reasons. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. so now I think we're at like the perfect time to go to more combo conventions. For sure. I I know a lot of friends that went to San Diego Comic Con and they would always like, you know, wait for, wait in online virtual line to, to try to get tickets because the raffles were there. Some of them got grandfathered into going every year. I never really got into that mainly because I'm not a big fan. Well, I always find myself ending up in lines, long lines for stuff, but I don't like them. I don't like waiting <laughs> in long lines. When we when we did kind of get back into comics in 2019, I think we went to the Silicon Valley Comic Show or Comic Con, right? I think Steve Wozniak at that point was still running that show. And um, I think that was that my one first I didn't go kinda... to. You went to that one? How was it? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I Maybe that was someone to... else. Yeah. No, um, that was that was Stan Lee's last show. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, I did not wait in line and um, get a signature for anything, but and they had him behind a curtain so people couldn't take pictures from outside and stuff like that. But it was a pretty cool show. There was it was really big, a lot of cosplay. Um, 
it was kind of weird because like you would get your tickets and your card and everything in one huge building and then only after you do that then you could go into the main building where the actual convention center is in the middle of san jose mm -hmm. um but I liked it. There was a lot of stuff going on, a lot of artists, but I felt like I was a little bit overwhelmed, mainly because I I didn't game plan, right? I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to walk around. There's a lot of vendors, a lot of different artists. Um, but the main focus was not necessarily, you know, selling comic books, not the vendors. That's what I heard so about the weird. Silicon Valley Comic Con. Yeah. Like, I heard someone at a comic book store, you know, I was just eavesdropping. I heard him say, that it's that it was like San Diego Comic Con, except without all the good parts with the comic books. It's like <laughs> it was, just, yeah, Oof. where Oof. it was really crowded and mostly about like other media that wasn't comic books. Yeah, yeah. And it's really funny because you know, with movies and you know sci-fi stuff taking more and more of that space in the in the comic convention. Um, you know, there's almost no more room for like the typical vendors that you see, like Mile High Comics or some of the other um, like vendors that have been around since the start of it. And I remember reading this one Reddit comment saying that, yeah, like, you know, it's a shame that they're going and I get everyone likes to see the, you know, stuff about big movies and stuff like that. But yeah going to, yeah but like going to a comic book convention where comic books aren't the focus it's almost like going to a wedding but then having but then there being no wedding ceremony like you just show up for like the reception and dancing part of it but you know like while you're there right you're you're, you're there for yeah. the wedding and for your comic book convention typically you're there for the comic books you know so well some people hard. are some people yeah are. yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I, I most recently went to the Berkeley Comic Show. I believe they normally have this show um, every four to six months um, in Berkeley. And it's very, very vendor focused. I did a video on this a couple weeks back, maybe um, a couple months back by this point, where it was vendor focused. There was some artists there, but it was for the collector. So I came to think to myself, all right, if we were to plan for the future, what type of show would we want to go to? Would we want to go to this kind of small, more intimate kind of show and only focus on comic collecting? Or would you want to go to a bigger show where you actually see more stuff? There's contests, cosplay, there's um, panels with, with different, you know, maybe actors, actresses and, and whatnot. But mm -hmm. where, where, which one would you lean towards for, for future shows? Oh, I mean... <laughs> I like all of them, so I would go to any and all of them that I have the time for. But if mm -hmm. I had to choose one, I would say the bigger ones. Like, like if WonderCon comes back next year, I'd be, I would try to go to that. And I say that because I do most of my buying like online or at the store. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the convention scene isn't that great for me in, in that regard. And like the most fun part about these conventions like the one i went with you um in berkeley uh you know a couple years back, back yeah a couple years back was getting to meet the creators like like meeting the writers and meeting the artists yeah we met and, eric larson yeah that yeah, was pretty cool very cool yeah, yeah. very very cool. yeah so and yeah i enjoy like that experience more than the hunting part of it although the, the hunting part is really fun too you know like don't get me wrong it is than that yeah it's hunting is fun when you find something it's yeah it's, it's definitely fun when you find something right so i'm going I'm through a, a long box yeah. yeah it's good times yeah like you know you're 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 behind the guy who's also looking through the long box you see him pass up a book that you want and you're like Please, <laughs> keep going. don't go back don't go back yeah. yeah i remember that feeling way too many times um for for me I most recent, I, I feel like, you know, um, I've softened a little bit on, on the smaller shows, mainly because I, I had such a good experience with the most recent Berkeley comic show, but you know, I, it's, I, I met people that I knew there. Um, I talked to the vendors. I think it's that social interaction, which we haven't had with a lot of the bigger comic book community in person, which is why that felt like a, a really cool experience. But I think just like you. 
I'd want to go see Artist Alley, just see a, a bunch of different artists. Maybe not wait in line for a bunch of them because I think that's one of the things. I don't want to go to a convention to spend most of my time waiting in line for something. Oh right, yeah, and like that's exactly what you would do at the San Diego Comic Con. Is that you? I mean, like like all the stuff that you see, you know, that you go online and see. It's like mostly waiting in line to like get those exclusives. Oh yeah, and, for sure. yeah. And there's so much FOMO there because you're like, oh, but I have to wait in line because I'm here and I'm and then I can't get it here, and that's kind of stressful. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like you definitely gotta, like I think with each con, you have to, like what you're saying, like make that to do list, and yeah, that list has to be in order by how much you want it. And there's some things that you just can't get to, and you yeah. know, you just had to focus on the stuff that you could get to. This is totally like we're like Troy and Abed, and um, Abed is like we gotta plan for Inspector Space Time. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. We gotta we gotta change this up. So, I, I think it, it. I'm gonna be in the middle here, right? So I think any like you said, any con would be or any show would be really cool to join and and kind of really experience that. I definitely want to do a San Diego Comic Con at least once, but I think my bread and butter would be kind of the. Like those bigger shows, but in smaller cities. So you still get、um, your some actors, actresses, some cosplay, some different events other than comics. But then you also get comics and artists and and so on and so forth. But without all the hoopla, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's a website that tracks all these comic book conventions, which I don't have the URL for, but we'll post in the links later. Yeah, and yeah,、uh, and yeah, it's it's a It, yeah, because because like you were saying, there's like so many cons now because you know of course the comic books are really popular,、yeah. um, and I think the show that would be in the middle, like we we're talking about, is is like a Satcon or something ran by Wizard World that takes place in Sacramento. This is very specific to Bay Area listeners, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So just like, but Wizard World hosts a lot of different cons in different cities. It kind of overcharged to be honest, but I think that's. Maybe becoming yeah, a normal, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, paying for experience. And Satcon is something that different, where it's more local, kind of like the Berkeley one, and that is cheaper, but is also a bigger venue. And you know, like so,、uh, these events that take place in sort of like less big cities, like you know, say Sacramento, has that size you're looking for, I think. Yeah. yeah. So,、uh, I think in summary, my go-to would be that mid-size con. But I would probably more frequent the smaller con because I feel like I would want to focus on on the books itself. And then for you, I'm guessing you're you're leaning more towards the bigger cons, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bigger ones. I you know, there's like so many big cons out there, like WonderCon,、mm. Emerald City, Dragon. It would be cool to, I don't like in a world where I had all the time and money, I would totally want to hit up all of those. Yeah, I definitely、yeah. want to do like C two E two in Chicago. I heard New York Comic Con is just as Robust as a San Diego Comic Con, but there's less people. Even though there's still、yeah. a lot of people, there's still less people. But yeah, I, I guess for our listeners out there, let's pose this question to you. There's going to be a ton of con cons coming out the next couple years, and everyone's getting into it. What's your guys' bread and butter? Do you like these smaller, more intimate shows where it's focused on the books and maybe one or two artists, or do you like the bigger cons where it's more so focused on? The fanfare, the everything that has to do with comics, whether whatever media it is, like movies, comics itself, artists, like cosplay. Let us know in the comment section below. I definitely want to know about everyone's favorite cons that they've been to and their experiences. So, hopefully, you guys could share your experiences with us. If you like this video, don't forget to click that thumbs up button, subscribe, and click that bell icon so you're notified of when we come out with new content. So from our comic journey to yours, make it your own. Thanks all. Bye. Bye.